Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am outside 43 uh, Sloan Square Gardens in London. And this is the house where William Wilberforce died. So who was William Wilberforce? Well, uh, he's best known as one of the leading figures of the campaign to abolish slavery throughout the uh, British Empire. He was born in Hull, which is a city in Yorkshire. His father was a timber trader so he bought a lot of uh, wood from Scandinavia and sold it mainly to shipbuilders um, in the United Kingdom. Uh, so his father prospered in business and became very wealthy. Uh, so Wilberforce uh, went to school in Yorkshire. I've actually been to the school he attended, um, just, just for a hockey match. And then to Cambridge. Then he was elected to Parliament. So he was more associated with the Tories and the Whigs. He wasn't really a party man. Uh, there was no formal membership to political parties in the 18th century. Uh, who was a Tory or a Whig? Well, that was whoever called himself a Tory or a Whig. Anyway, um, Wilberforce was an Anglican, that's to say, a member of the Church of England, like most people in England at the time. And he was on the evangelical wing of the, uh, of the uh, Anglican Church, who believed in greater enthusiasm in worship, yet less ritual. And he believed that uh, one really had to live the gospel and it must inform one's every decision. One had to be ethical, one's private dealings and hard working and so on. Um, and he saw that slavery was gross, grossly immoral. So he teamed up with other people um, who lived in Clapham, South London, uh, to form the, the um, uh, Clapham sect, an informal group of evangelical Anglicans. And uh, their um, primary goal was the abolition of slavery. There were other people who also wanted to see the abolition of slavery, most notably Quakers, and these Anglicans are happily cooperated with them. So they're motivated by moral considerations, but also uh, by their faith. Um, they introduced bills in Parliament to get it abolished, it would get through the House of Commons, not the House of Lords. There was, of course, a um, very well-financed pro-slavery lobby in this country who claimed that all these stories of horrific abuses on plantations were the most disgusting fabrications or um, specious pro-slavery arguments were advanced by those who had a vested interest in maintaining servitude, such as, oh, we've rescued these people from being eaten by wild animals in Africa, or surely better to work for a Christian master than a heathen one. Um, as though being whipped by one would be better than being um, whipped by another. Or you might live completely free and happily in Africa. Um, e even the pro-slavery people found it difficult to say that abducting people was acceptable. And many people were killed whilst being abducted. Oh, the pro-slavery caucus said, well, it was simply vital to the economy and so forth. And other countries did it, so why, why shouldn't we do it? And if we, don't, if we stop it, others will carry on and all the rest of it. Um, anyway, so finally in 1833, the Abolition of Slavery uh, Act was passed, but it's to be phased in over five years. The slaves would be turned into apprentices and supposedly prepared for liberty. It was actually brought forward and done in about four years. Even then there were a few exemptions for certain territories of the British Empire. So Wilberforce died very shortly after that. So um, there's a Wilberforce College in the United States named in his honour. And, and uh, there's a statue in the middle of Hull, his um, hometown. Um, so one of the perhaps surprising things about him is he, he had no truck with democracy. And some people on the pro-slavery side pointed out that the proletariat in the British Isles were little better off than slaves. They uh, were, could be wage slaves, they were often beaten by their masters, and no legal action was taken about that. If a, a servant broke a contract, it was a criminal matter, whereas if a master was in breach of contract, it was a civil matter, uh, and so on. There were wife sales going on here in this country well into the 19th century. Read Thomas Hardy novels about it. And the working class and much of the middle class didn't have a vote at this time. Um, so should not something not be done to liberate them? But uh, Wilberforce did not see it that way. Um, and he was in many ways conservatives and, and conservative believed that aristocrats should wield political power. Uh, he also believed in animal rights, and he had many injured animals in his house who he tended for. Uh, what else about him? Oh, he had a whirlwind romance and married just a fortnight after meeting a young lady. Um, some of his friends persuaded him to try and slow down, sorry, attempted to persuade him to slow down, to reflect on this, but he wouldn't listen to their counsel. He was head over heels in love, he went right ahead and married this woman, but had a very happy marriage. Um, his son Samuel uh, Wilberforce was the Bishop of Oxford, an Anglican bishop, and a uh, vehement denier of the theory of evolution. There was a um, famous debate 
in the Natural History Museum in Oxford between um, Soapy Sam, Wilberforce, and uh, Huxley, as they called him, um, Darwin's bulldog. Uh, so that is William Wilberforce, a fascinating character. You ought to see the biopic about him entitled Amazing Grace, came out about 2006, as it alludes to the hymn Amazing Grace by John Newton, former slaver and friend of uh, William Wilberforce's.